Okay, so thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Uh, as I said, we're doing a story about um, Latino community and vaccination rates. They're low. And you know, now that the vaccines are open for everybody, we kind of need to figure out why is that? What kind of things are happening that are preventing that? So um, I'm gonna start uh, just uh, with both of you, both. Uh, asking, you know, we are seeing some low vaccination rates among Latinos here in Denver. According to Denver Public Health, 26% of Latinos have only received their first dose compared to uh, compared to 60% of, of uh, non-Hispanic whites. Um, can one or both of you share why is it that we are seeing such low vaccination rates and uh, what are some of, uh, of the things that are making Latinos hesitant to get the vaccine? So, um, you know, I, I wanna remind uh, uh, that your question is very restricted to Denver, correct? Denver city and county? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. So, uh, and I think that's happening across the state also, you know, we're still lagging behind. Uh, uh, as a demographic uh, in terms of uh, being vaccinated in Colorado, but in particular in Denver, you know, Cerezos de la Raza um, started uh, vaccinating uh, in particular our Latino community in late January as uh, facilitating pop-up clinics uh, with uh, in January with uh, our Latina electeds, both at the state and city level. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, in fact, um, in particular, as a trusted hands um, uh, human service provider, meaning that we've been around for 49 years, we've been doing work in our communities uh, for 49 years and serving our communities, in particular in Denver, uh, as a Denver-centric founded organization, now statewide, working statewide, um, you know, we are trusted in our communities, both by the our native Spanish speakers and our native English speaking Chicano community. And as a result, uh, we have not in our uh, efforts to vaccinate our communities in Denver, uh, had that problem of uh, people not wanting to be vaccinated. Uh, I think there's a, uh, there's a big difference between uh, people uh, there's a trust factor and uh, as a trusted hands organization we haven't had that problem in fact we've had the opposite we've had uh, over uh, uh, you know 100 uh, people on our waiting list to be vaccinated when we uh, we facilitate and host pop-up clinics that have vaccinated close to uh, 2500 in our community in denver and denver metro uh, but most in particular denver uh, you know, over since January to present day. So, uh, you know, I, I get a, you know, I think right there, there's, uh, you know, that, that, that becomes an answer for uh, government to uh, really seek out and resource community-based organizations of color who are trusted hands, that are trusted uh, uh, organizations that have been doing, that are longtime organizations doing incredible work in serving communities, uh, our communities in Denver, to partner with them and help them, uh, uh, you know, build the capacity to provide clinics where they're at night on Sundays. Many of our people work six days a week, right? Our Latino communities, they're hard workers. Uh, they're not able to access clinics even on a Saturday. And so we're looking at more, maybe some evenings and Sundays uh, to, uh, to uh, increase, uh, you know, uh, vaccinations among uh, our uh, demographic in Denver. I, I see. Now, uh, Dr. Ricardo uh, Gonzalez, can you speak to, you know, you as a doctor uh, embedded with the Latino community, what are some of the issues, uh, you know, that people uh, come up to you and say, you know, if you're trying to get vaccinated, uh, someone vaccinated, uh, what are some of the problems um, that, that, that you're seeing with, with uh, you know, uh, vaccine hesitancy uh, 
among Latino uh, communities. When, when you look carefully at why people want to get vaccinated or why people are reluctant to get vaccinated, I think that it all comes down to a, a issue of trust. Uh, people in our communities tend to trust the faith leaders, the community organizations, the Servicios de la Raza. And uh, I mean, what uh, Rudy was just explaining, we have waiting lists in our events it, because we work with the community so the communities get their, their vaccines. I think that the other part, the other problem that we have is uh, lack of reliable information or an excessive amount of uh, unreliable information going on in their social media. That's actually a good point. It leads me to my next question. So there's, you know, there's, you know, Facebook, social media, you know, uh, people spreading, you know, uh, fake uh, articles, fake information about the vaccine, that it's going to give you the virus or that, you know, stuff like that. Can both of you speak on what uh, Servicios de la Raza is doing, uh, not just here in Denver, but across the state uh, to combat uh, uh, such misinformation about COVID-19 and, and the vaccine? Doctor, go ahead and take that. Thank you. What we have been working with uh, Latino communities in our state for close to 50 years. Uh, in reality, I have the privilege to be here since uh, for five years now. And our one of our main strategies is to talk to the people in their language and uh, in ways that they understand. We are participating in every forum that uh, we are invited to, to talk about factual information. We want to give real facts about things. We are also asking and listening to the community and listening to those small uh, conversations that they will not give you in a survey, but they will come and tell you directly because they trust you. What are the things or why? what are the concerns that they have with uh, some type of a vaccine or, the, or what's going on? I want to add that uh, Servicios has been actively involved in parallel campaigns with Kaiser uh, on a COVID equity and vaccination uh, messaging, uh, you know, and that we're a community, uh, both native English speakers and native Spanish speakers uh, in, in Colorado, in Denver, that is a high touch, multiple touch community. We don't engage on the first message. You know, you, we have to have a message that is carefully nuanced, that engages our communities you know, one of our messages is hazlo por amor. Do it for love, love of your family, love of yourself, love of your neighbors, love of your community, uh, love of your world. And so, you know, it's about uh, that nuancing, uh, uh, that those nuances of messaging and how, and, and prioritizing our demographic, prioritizing our communities in that messaging. And just let me add something that uh, what we are seeing are problems that are, that result more from uh, structural barriers than from information. People have certain access to information, but because of these structural barriers that are poverty, racism, uh, issues of trust, uh, people are come to us and listen to us because uh, they are, these issues will not be solved only with uh, information campaigns. It will be solved when you are truly committed to a mission that is to serve and to give opportunities to the people. That leads to my next question. So, you know, you've mentioned you, uh, I read, uh, and you just reiterated this, this fact that you've been working for this community for close to 50 years. That is, oh, that is half a century. That that's that's a lot of years to be involved in, in healthcare and helping uh, the Latino community, low-income families, uh, people who may not have the resources, uh, you know, uh, to go to a hospital and you know, to, to 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 get uh, 
uh, health care that, that is, uh, quite frankly, in this country, very expensive. Um, so what are some of the ways in which Servicios de la Raza uh, has tried to reach Latinos uh, who have not yet gotten vaccinated? Uh, you know, again, as I said, we are uh, involved in multiple campaigns around messaging, not just here in Denver, but across the state of Colorado in a variety of uh, forms. This is one right here, you know, being able to uh, talk uh, to our community on Channel 7 uh, to about the importance of being vaccinated, uh, about the importance of getting the vaccine uh, and uh, you know, the the other forms are multiple uses of social media. Uh, we may not have, uh, a lot of us don't have internet. A lot of us don't have computers, but we're, a lot of us, and many of us, and most of us do have phones. And so the texting and those types of messaging uh, campaigns are important around uh, letting people know uh, the outreach engagement that we do uh, on our social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, is constant, consistent uh, with the, again, nuanced messaging in both English and Spanish uh, around the importance of, uh, of getting the vaccine and uh, returning to uh, uh, re returning to togetherness, right? Uh, as a, and it's so important in our community because we are a very communal uh, culture, culture, right? We're a very communal culture in which we, uh, and we have very big families and very big extended families, and we love to come together often. We're a very social culture. And uh, so uh, it's important uh, that we take care of each other. And this is uh, an important way to do just that. And just to add uh, uh, on this, we are going to, to the communities and the communities uh, on terms. So we are organizing our events at Servicios de la Raza with the people who trust us at Servicios de la Raza and they come to our events and our events are full of people uh, with social distancing and we are making a party out of the vaccine. We are giving vaccines and the Mexican consulate when we have these events for the communities that come to the Mexican consulate. And when we're going to different parts of our state that we're going to, that we are visiting, we've been in different parts of our state working with community organizations in those communities who are trusted by the community. And it's just a community event. This is how it works. And, and you know, we sell good food. Uh, we make sure that music is uh, very present during these uh, events with uh, one of our staff who's also uh, seconds as a DJ. And, uh, you know, we play all genres of music, cumbias, rancheras, I mean, uh, you know, uh, old school R&B, uh, you know, we, we have fun doing this work because it is important work, but uh, it's still life and it's, life's too short not to have fun. That is indeed the case. Life is very much too short not to have fun, and and you know that that's very great that 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 you're able to, uh, like you said, make a party out of out of such a, a you know, uh, not not that I'm saying that getting vaccinated is bad because it's not, but a bad situation of a pandemic and the need to to have uh, you know some sort of positive aspect of a positive spin to to getting. Uh, very, very life-saving shot in the midst of a very. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, we, we, uh, uh, you know, all of us, including myself, have lost dear, dear friends, uh, relatives, uh, you know, uh, to this lethal virus. We know uh, the the horror, the tragedy, the sadness, and pain and suffering that this has caused upon millions of people across this country and in Colorado. But, you know, we are here to uh, say, uh, you know, we're going to uh, do the work that we need to do in service to others, to save lives, uh, to uh, keep our community safe, and, uh, and still, and still uh, have that passion and that energy to say, you know what, let's have fun while we're doing it. Uh, because life is, uh, you know, life is life, uh, 
we are all living life and we are all, all mortal and we all will be going the way of our ancestors, but let's make a difference while we're here on this earth. And people want to live and people know that the vaccine will save them. And people are coming because they feel at home. Thank you very much. No, that's 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 a really great perspective. Now, can you talk to me about, uh, you know, obviously your your organization is, is doing great community outreach. Uh, can you maybe expand on, on, on some of the things that you've doing uh, that you've done since the vaccine rollout started that has helped uh, Latinos? Maybe you know, I know the state has put up. Uh, mobile vaccination buses. Uh, so the visas that are have done something similar or, or what are some of the things that you've done as an organization to get and reach Latinos to get them vaccinated? Well, Servicios de la Raza is uh, fortunate to have one of 11 mobile health units in North America funded by the Mexican Department of Health. Uh, another great uh, 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 addition to the work that we're doing. It's uh, pretty much a rolling doctor's office we're, uh, you know, all puns intended, mobilizing the mobile health unit uh, to go on what I call the Vacuna Palooza tour uh, across Colorado to uh, vaccinate our communities, including campesinos that are coming into our state to, uh, to, to do the work that puts the food on our tables uh, to uh, uh, Chicano and Mexicano and Latino centric communities across the state of Colorado to bring the vaccination to our communities and bring uh, this uh, uh, this service to our communities across the state of Colorado, not just Denver. And so, you know, we're uh, a nimble and agile organization, and we're going to mobilize to do this work over the next four to five months, and maybe even uh, further. Uh, you know, depending on uh, resources, as as long as our resources hold out uh, that we can continue to do this across the state of Colorado and Denver, right? And uh, so I think that's uh, super important about uh, the work that we do. And the fact that I think we were the first organization that came out doing this work, we actually were teaching and role modeling for other communities on how to, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, mobilize, how to build your capacity, how to uh, create and uh, host and facilitate uh, these events successfully and and do it uh, in a good way and a healthy way for our community, all puns intended. Up to date, we've been in 19 events, organized, staffed, and managed by Servicios de la Raza in conjunction with our Department of Health, the CDPHE, we've been we've been fortunate enough to understand the needs and the process to deserve to be one of their important uh, partners to roll out the vaccine to our communities. We've vaccinated, we've provided more than six thousand doses right now, and the thing, as Rudy says, is just going and we are grateful that we can be doing this. Awesome, thank you very much. Now, uh, you know, obviously you're doing great work, but is there is there, are there still some issues that you're seeing that, that prevent Latinos from, from getting the COVID vaccine? Certainly, uh, there's a lot of pop-up clinics that don't have uh, uh, bilingual capability. And uh, so people are unable to access it uh, who are monolingual right and are spanish speaking or don't understand or just won't go uh so we need more pop-up clinics that have bilingual uh, capacity and bilingual volunteers and personnel that are going to uh, be able to create that uh comfort level for people to come in and feel uh welcome and feel uh, 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 you know, uh, treat it with dignity and respect in their own language. And, and that's maybe, uh, you know, that's, that's regarding Latino 
our Latino population here in Colorado. I think that's a, uh, a big barrier right now, uh, just in the language barrier. Uh, the other one is transportation. Uh, you know, those clinics need to go where our people are, uh, mobile home parks, uh, uh, public housing, uh, you know, and, and start really concentrating and, and, uh, and thinking about work schedules and when those clinics should be operating, you know, not just uh, Friday and Saturday or days, but evenings and Sundays. And, uh, uh, you know, some of those are barriers right now. Doctor, do you see anything else? No, I, those are the things that I have identified. And the other thing is the issue of trust. People trust us. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's now, I want to ask this question because, you know, um, recently we reported that, uh, you know, the state set up a, a, a vaccine website in Spanish. Uh, and that was like, you know, very late in kind of in the game because they, they would upload the documents as PDF files, but they didn't have a comprehensive Spanish website. So they did that. But then uh, recently, we, the day that uh, they opened vaccinations to everyone, uh, we found out uh, that the the Spanish vaccine portion of, you know, where you can get vaccinated had not been updated in over two months. So it was still telling people, hey, you know, if you're 70 and up, you can get vaccinated. We're going to open up to the six, uh, 65 and up starting February 8th, but it was already April 6th. So is there something that the state has uh, done wrong or has forgotten or is there, has there been a mishap? in their process to roll out the vaccine that has affected uh, uh, the Latino community that, 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 that you want to address. Right. And I, I, I just think that, uh, you know, that was one item that probably uh, obviously was overlooked. Uh, uh, and it is an example of uh, priorities and where your priorities are. Uh, obviously, the priority wasn't on, uh, uh, you know, a daily upkeep of that uh, site in Spanish and, and keeping those, uh, uh, you know, the information up to date. But uh, uh, to the state's credit, you know, when they were notified uh, by uh, 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 people that's close to this organization, uh, they moved quickly to rectify that, that, that particular problem and to our satisfaction. Uh, one thing, a lot of, but let's talk about what the state has done right. Uh, you know, our governor has uh, demonstrated incredible leadership around uh, uh, COVID equity and bringing together uh, a diverse team that includes people like Rick Palacio from the state side, uh, Nita Gonzalez from community, uh, uh, who is just an incredible uh, statewide community leader uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, real statewide chops and Denver centric uh, 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 woman, uh, Maisha Fields, uh, daughter, who's an incredible health uh, expert in her own right and a nonprofit leader and uh, serving the African American community, you know. And so I think uh, uh, some, and, and let's talk about uh, not just the Latino community, but we are also an indigenous people. And as so, we work very closely with our Native American. Uh, communities, as does Nita Gonzalez, uh, as uh, and all of them serve on the statewide what's called the COVID vaccine equity team, and so they are also a huge reservoir of expertise and talent and knowledge about what is going on in the state, uh, what those efforts are around uh, driving uh, the vaccine, driving the equity around vaccination. Uh, and trying to, uh, and really pushing to get our communities and the hard to reach communities, because we are hard to reach. We are the high fruit, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, getting uh, access to and engagement and uh, ultimately vaccinating our communities across the state. Anything you want to add, doctor? Not, nothing to add. I think that we, as I said before, we have been we have been privileged by working very close to the Department of Health and the governor's office to make these things possible. 
All right, thank you very much. Is there something I have not asked, uh, something I missed in this conversation that you would like to address? Doctor? Uh, I think that uh, we covered everything uh, that we needed to cover there. Just want to let you know, and I wrote it there on your chat, but if you say that you have 26, that 26 percent of the people in Denver Hills uh, that have been vaccinated in Denver Hills are Latinos, it's close to the 29 percent of the population of the of the population of Denver that are Latinos. So that doesn't show that there is that uh, much of a disparity there. Uh, if the numbers are that only 29, 26 percent of that 29 have been vaccinated, that will show a problem. I see. No, I, I saw that information in the chat, and you are right. Yeah, based on Latino population and stuff like that. And I'm still actually uh, waiting on the state to give me some uh, information about. Uh, well, and I would say that we don't open our doors to be counted, and uh, so we are always undercounted. So I would say we're higher than that 29 percent uh, in the in the city, and and higher than the 20 percent in the state. Uh, you know, as a population, and we're exponentially growing. Uh, but I would say, uh, in 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 closing, that uh, uh, that Denver city government uh, needs to resource community-based uh, organizations of color. Need to bring resources, not just bring their mobile truck, or not just bring Denver Public Health, but actually resources to step up our clinics and. Uh, be able to accommodate our population in the evenings and on Sundays, uh, but resources with with uh, with funds uh, because uh, we need to uh, pay our volunteers. We need to pay staff. We need to resource on food, uh, on all of that kind of uh, uh, those kind of costs need to be resourced by government. Uh, and need to uh, be resourced to help us build our capacity to vaccinate our communities who feel so comfortable and safe and respected coming to uh, clinics like ones at Servicios de la Raza. And state government uh, has done a good job at that. All right. Well, I want to thank you all uh, very much for, for uh, allowing me the, the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, what does this mean, Oscar? What are you going to do? Uh, you're going to put three seconds of us on, or man, we gave you a lot of good shot, good answers. <laughs> I'm going to write a very long, lengthy web story, and I am not a video editor, but I hope they use most of this conversation. I know they will want to use this on our newscast, but we'll definitely be streaming this whole interview on our streaming apps. So oh, awesome! Hey, do me a favor, Oscar. I want links to everything. Sure, of course. Would you? Yes, of course, definitely. Yeah, that, that's always what I do. Whenever I do a story, yes. I make sure to send everything to everyone. Yes, so well, you we'll will get an email. Have to get out to, for messaging too. Yeah, and definitely. The doctor, do it all in Spanish. <laughs> I I will try to do that. Why not? Yeah. The, well, you could too, Silango. Exactly. exactly. Uh huh. Uh, is there anything else that you want to mention or have we covered everything? Is there maybe a particular event that you want to share with Latinos? Well, you know, we're doing a thousand shot uh, in Fort Morgan Saturday. We'll be uh, traveling to Fort Morgan. It's the, uh, you know, we did a 663 in Longmont on May, on uh, April 10th, Saturday. Uh, we will be doing another Aurora event for the Guatemalan uh, consulate uh, for Guatemalan nationals on uh, May 8, uh, May 1st, and then we'll be in Fort Lupton, May 8th, doing, uh, uh, how many shots, doctor? 300, 300 in Fort Lupton on the 8th, and on the 9th, 500 in Lafayette. Froze. I'm frozen, froze. I'm frozen. You said so, 300 in Fort Lupton? 300 in Fort Lupton and, nine, and 500 in Lafayette. Oh, and we'll do be going to Lafayette. Then we'll be, like I said, we'll be across the state in the next four to five months. Yep. So look for Servicios de la Raza coming near you. Awesome. Great to hear. Now, doctor, anything you want to tell uh, people who, who you know, are hearing you as a doctor uh, about the importance of getting vaccinated and getting this life-saving 
unfortunately, we are going through a very difficult time. I think that this is uh, something that happens not in every generation, but we are living a very deadly disease. Uh, we have a solution. The best solution that we have right now is the vaccine. So just get vaccinated. As Rudy was saying, hazlo por amor. Thank you very much for both of you for your time. I know you're very, very busy, man. So I really appreciate you, uh, you know, giving me 30 minutes of your time to uh, have this conversation and, and hopefully spread the good word about, you know, the importance of getting the vaccine. Thank you, Oscar. Oscar.